Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Marsh. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to present the subject of proton therapy and how proton therapy is going to shift the treatment paradigm of using radiation in treatment of cancer patients. To give you an, an historical baseline, I would like just to mention the discovery of X-ray properties more than 100 years ago by Dr. Uh, Rengen in 1895 that became actually the push and opened the era for use of X-ray in radiology and radiation therapy. In perspective of time and history, it's amazing how the X-ray treatment became ubiquitously present throughout the world. Almost 8,000 radiation oncology departments used X-ray for treatment of patients. It's used for radical palliative treatments, it's used for uh, treatment with radiation alone or in combination with surgery and chemotherapy. Here you can see the blue dot that represent the modalities that use X-ray uh, source externally. And the yellow dots represent the X-ray sources implanted within the patient body, all for treatment of cancer. From the beginning, the nature and hazardous nature of X-ray became apparent, apparent for clinical use and for science. And the Hippocrates oath, first on harm, became relevant nevermore. Until today, the therapeutic effect of X-ray is weighted in view of its hazardous nature on healthy organs and became the basis for planning and treating patient, cancer patients with radiation. Several years after discovery of Rengen, Dr. Bragg discovered actually the uh, behavior of ion particles, ion rays, ion rays like protons, alpha particles, or other ions that lose their energy at the end of their travel within a matter immediately before the particle comes to the rest. They generate a peak called till today break peak and shows the unique features that differentiate particle distribution within the matter to distribution of the X-ray X-ray beams. This discovery lent credence to uh, an additional discovery and proposal of uh, Another Nobel Prize uh, recipient, Robert Wils w w Wilson, uh, who proposed to use protons in medicine for treatment of cancer, strikingly describing, describing the striking difference between the protons and conventional or X-ray distribution within the matter. Well, protons enter the body with minimum energy and splash the energy at the end of the pass which called Bragg peak with zero, zero damage after the, after the tumor. The conventional or X-ray radiation primarily hits the tissues at the entrance, hit the tumor at the uh, weighted energy level and continue uh, passing through the, through the healthy tissue distally to the target. Uh, it's uh, the new study of uh, five, uh, seven years ago further demonstrated that the break peak has not only the, the symmetric benefits, but also a biologic one. The study showed that the biological effect within the peak can be spot as 10 fold uh, more profound on the biological, on the tissues, as opposed to the, uh, uh, to the if biological effect uh, during the entrance. The most re recent study actually in 2021 that captured very nicely the uh, several papers um, in a published recent while uh, showing that the proton beam, if meet the boron incorporated accidentally or on purpose uh, within the tumor cell can generate alpha particle with significantly larger biological effect on the tissue. This effect is uh, more profound on on uh, on on a prep peak and less significant in the entrance in the entrance of the proton array within the tissue. 
Artistically, the difference between X-ray and protons can be seen uh, at this slide. When you see that the proton beam specifically can be focused on the deep-seated tumor, while photons or X-ray primarily damage the tissue at the entrance, hit the tumor and continue delivering the dose to the healthy tissue uh, distally. In order to enable X-ray treatments, different uh, techniques have been developed all based on the fact that the beam should be split to a very little race with small edges delivered through multiple angles. Various techniques uh, that became a mainstream clinical practice today in all radiation oncology department use on array of uh, low energy or sm small dose, I'm sorry, small dose uh, X-ray X-ray beamlets um, deliver either along the uh, same plane, coplanar uh, co or non-coplanar treatments with the possibility of dynamic radiation, radiation while the machine is uh, rotating about the patients. All these techniques became feasible or possible with incorporation into the machinery uh, gantry, the gantry that actually rotate the source, the source about the patient. The use of gantry and the delivery of the multiple beam around the patient allow to cover the tumor with the dose excellently, uh, similarly or identically with the dose coverage that we can see with the proton beam. The only difference is that the lots of tissues here receive the small doses of radiation with the potential uh, risks of developing secondary, uh, secondary tumors or other long-term side effects that cannot be and can be spared in case of proton, when the beam is delivered from single or two uh, directions uh, on two directions on average. This phenomenon, which is called, uh, which is called the bass effect, the low dose bass effect, is uh, seen, is demonstrated for all X-ray modalities. You can see here low grade glioma uh, treated with photons, VMAT, IMRT, TOMO, three different types of uh, X-ray therapy and IMPT. And we see that IMP IMPT, which is a proton therapy, spared the healthy tissue with no low dose absorbed uh, by the brain as opposed to the X-ray. And that led credence to the idea that probably the proton therapy is the most, the safest type of modality with the minimum to zero risk of secondary tumors due to the low dose exposure or a bass effect. Well, protons are definitely clinically and dysymmetrically, um, dysymmetrically definitely and probably clinically better than X-ray for various types of tumors. They today incorporated in 110 uh, centers throughout the world, and this map uh, should represent the allocation. Uh, again, blue and zero, blue and yellow represent the X-ray uh, facility location, uh, red uh, proton facility location. And as we see, less than 1% of all modalities, of all centers, uh, have been able to integrate proton offering to the, to the, to the patients. As a reason for scarcity of proton options uh, in radiation oncology departments, mainly uh, results from the use of gantry. The gantry of protons is huge, bulky, and very expensive, and can compete with, uh, with the gantry of X-ray source which is 2.23 meter, uh, meters uh, uh, in, in a domain dimension. So on the understanding that the gantry probably is the, uh, the, the, the main factor that, uh, that uh, deteriorates penetration of protons into the clin clinical practice, and on the assumption that uh, protons actually don't need so many angles to be delivered to the patient, uh, the vendors del delivered the vendors developed uh, uh, during the last 20 years uh, various options to decrease the cost, to decrease the size, and to push proton therapy to the uh, routine to routine practice uh, in in all facilities. So one of the options was to cut the motion by half and to come up with a half a gantry solution uh, when the uh, when the um, uh, lack of uh, uh, rotational flexibility of the gantry is being compensated with the couch motion. 
Another approach was to use the gantry that rotates uh, between two uh, fixed beam directions when the uh, horizontal uh, beam delivery, as it's in here, is compensated with, with the couch motion and the incline inclined uh, beam direction is compensated with a chair motion. The most radical uh, solution came from, from Picure that proposed and developed a solution that doesn't need the gantry at all. It uses the chair motion that compensates uh, the need for different angles of the, uh, of the, of the delivery and diagnostic quality image guidance based on the 4D CT within the treatment workflow to position the patient uh, to position the patient appropriately now the evolution of the uh, gantry full 360 degree gantry to gantryless uh, solution can be seen here with understanding that the probably gantryless is the only option that will enable proton therapy to, well, for, for proton therapy uh, to get in, to move from the marginal to the main Stream clinical uh, uh, clinical practice. Another uh, another uh, phenomenon that I would like to mention in my talk is the fact that uh, uh, we treat patients in a supine position mostly. We do this uh, uh, under appreciation, understanding that this is probably the most uh, comfortable position for patients, and also we can keep the patient uh, still for the treatment procedure. Having said that, the recent study discovered that actually the laying position is not so good for treatment of moving target, particularly in chest and probably in abdomen. The, this slide represents the imaging data of subjects uh, uh, imaged in a supine position and in a seated position. And we see that particularly in a seated position, the lung volume can be extended the patient can breathe better and the heart is being displaced toward the diaphragm aside reducing potentially the cardiac uh, the cardiac toxicity uh, the cardiac toxicity this data has been supported by the 4 dct data of patient that uh, underwent imaging and then treatment in a seated position to the left and the supine position to the right and we can see the difference in the motion of the internal organ in the chest by, by tracking the diaphragm motion in both cases. Definitely the seated position represents much better option to, to, immobilize, to immobilize the subject and the, and the inner, inner volumes for, for better treatment. Now to enable this, uh, treat, those treatments in a seated position, the seated, uh, the CT for seated patient and MR for seated patient are must. And here we can see the example that those uh, those options are already available in the United States. You see the installation of North Western Medicine, and in Israel and in China, uh, those installations already um, took place. And the open MR for seated patient FNR is uh, the MR based option to. To plan the treatment and probably uh, image guide to, to use it for image guidance in the future. In the future, another uh, so solution uh, enabled to use uh, to use proton therapy for treatment of a seated patient. It's actually the adaptation of the immobilization aids for patient proper accommodation, a proper addition on the chair. Yeah, this day, the solution has been already brought to the market with an option. To mobilize, to mobilize, uh, to mobilize the well, uh, all body parts uh, in, in a chair position, and at the end, it's act, it's it pays off. The dysymmetric study that compared the uh, dose distribution of protons in a seated and supine position clearly showed that the seated position reduces actually half of the dose that is being absorbed uh, by lung, healthy lung. Um, with reference to the to the patient in a supine in a supine position, so I would like to stop here, and I would like to summarize the main the, my main points. 
First of all, the gantry-less solution probably is the only solution that is going to shift the paradigm of the use of proton therapy and to move this, uh, this very potential uh, solution from the, from the marginal to the main stream clinical practice. Secondly, we'll see more and more treatments of patients in the sick position, particularly for treatment of the tumor mass in the thorax and abdomen. We'll see the, um, uh, with the time being, we will see the positive effect of use of proton therapy on eliminating of a risk for secondary tumors by zeroing the uh, low dose bath effect, um, which is a feature of the, of the use of X-ray. And we will see and we will follow the clinical um, and in vivo research for strengthening the radiobiological effects of proton by combination of proton beam with borons or with the other uh, with the other with the other solutions. So thank you so much. Thank you.